Hello and welcome to Hadfield Education's Good to Great webinar series, where I interview the leading head teachers across the UK. And today I'm very fortunate to be joined by Chris Rue, who is the head teacher at Epony School in South Shields. Good afternoon, Chris. Thank you for being here. Afternoon, Lee. You okay? Um, yeah, great. Thank you, Chris. So what I'd like to do initially is just start to talk in terms of how you fell into education. So, so what took you into teaching? Well, you told I've fallen into it. Um, that's pretty much uh, what I did. Um, I, I fell into it. I had no intention of um, being a teacher or, or certainly being a head teacher. Um, I, I wanted to be a police officer um, and, and, and I had it planned to the, to the final detail of leaving university on the Friday and, and having my interview for the police on the Monday. But unfortunately, at that point, despite doing pretty well in the interview, um, and, and rightly so, you know, I didn't have any life experience. I'd, I'd just been at university. I didn't know how to socialise or deal with conflict, you know, as, as a grown adult. So, so unfortunately, it didn't, it didn't happen. Um, and to cut a long story short, the gentleman that I borrowed um, my kind of suitcase off um, was, a, was a practicing head teacher. Um, and when he asked me what I was going to do on, on returning his suitcase, I kind of said, well, I've got no idea. Uh, and and um, offered me a, a post with him for a week. Um, and uh, it was basically a TA post and it would be going into a special needs school and taking uh, children out of each class to give teacher PPA time. And I would take them into the hall and do a variety of different sports uh, lessons. Um, after a week, he thought I had something about us and, uh, and put me on a short term contract. And, and I fell in love with um, well, what was a, a TA a position, really. Um, and that was really my, my first initial steps into, into teaching. Brilliant. And so you really did start at the very, very beginning of, of teaching assistant um, work then? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's, it's been my best education, really. Um, so, so, so that initial contract was for, for six months and then it turned into a permanent contract. And, and what I tried to do um, with, with, within the first year, that our school was kind of at that time in Newcastle, all the special schools were amalgamating um, and they established a school, what was called Trinity School. We all had to kind of, um, you know, um, be interviewed for our jobs. And I got a job at, um, at the secondary um, site of Trinity School as a TA. Um, so what I tried to do in my initial years was just to kind of, you know, um, watch and observe different teachers, practitioners, and, and, you know, try to kind of take the best of what I saw and, and put my own spin on it. Um, and then to do as much CPD as I could. So I think within the first 10 years of, of being a TA and moving up through the ranks, there wasn't a year where I didn't do a qualification um, outside my job. So that took me from a TA um, and I did the, I think at that time it was called an SNA qualification yeah. and I went into a HLTA role um, and I went into a more pastoral position um, where, the, where the head teacher finally kind of you know taught me around to well maybe you should start looking at your teaching options and how we can get you qualified um, and at that point you couldn't actually qualify within a special school because we didn't have the national curriculum in, in all aspects we didn't have group size numbers so um, so we had a secondary school at the top of the hill um, and it was, a, I think they call it a, a GTB, or Graduate Training Program, yeah. where I was basically loaned out for a year. And, and I did my, my QTS through that scheme, which, which was fantastic, working with another group of kids and staff. Became a teacher, um, went back to my special ed school, um, and then kind of went through middle leadership qualifications and, and senior um, leadership qualifications before I got head of school. Um, and then decided to kind of move on from there. So in terms of your, your initial transition from being a teacher, HLTA, into teaching, how, how did you find that? Um, I, I feel like I was very lucky, um, really. You know, it wasn't the traditional, if you like, you know, from university and I've done a couple of placements um, yeah. and, and then I'm a teacher. I, I feel like the route I took, um, again, accidentally really prepared me well um, because as a TA, you know, um, my background was I'm a big sports person. So more often than not, the teacher would, would let me kind of take on the, the PE elements of, of the class. Um, and so I had lots of what I call hands on uh, responsibilities. Um, and, you know, I was able to kind of, you know, my friends were also teachers and they were able to kind of pass on different things about planning and pedagogy 
So, so I felt like I had more experience than most people going into teaching. Um, the difficulties for me were, were more moving from teaching to, to the middle leadership um, because you can imagine, it, you know, that I, I stayed um, from a TA to head of school within the same school um, for 19 years. Wow. So, so, so some of the difficulties were that the, the people that were managing you, um, it, it kind of turned itself on its head and you became their manager at some point. So, so I found that transition a little bit more difficult than actually going into teaching itself. So how long were you a teacher before you became a middle leader then? Um, probably about two or three years. It wasn't long at all. Not long um, no, and again, it comes down to a couple of things. I think, you know, um, my age at that time was, was I was really keen. I was doing, I was asking to do qualifications. Um, and at the same time, there was people retiring and moving on. So, so I was able to kind of, I felt, move quite quickly. And within the, um, the special needs environment, um, a niche that you work in is there any any specific um sort of traits or skills that you felt have really aided your teaching hmm. I, I think um i mean just to, to clarify the special needs i've been in most of my career it, it was around what was called ebd uh, yeah. and now semh and to work in any provision like that you need um, you need to be quite resilient um because it is although very rewarding it's it's, it's it's very challenging. Sure. Um, so, so one of the, the skills I feel I hope I have is, is, is being a people's person and having good relationship skills because ultimately you need them to bond, you know, relationships with young people. Um, and so, 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 so with that and your resilience, they're, they're for me the key qualities that, that I'd be looking for for people within that type of school. And what advice would you give to any like NQT that's, you know, currently learning their trade, starting out first 12 months within their, their teaching career? I would say always um, keep your options open. I think when people want to teach, you know, it, I think they want to teach because that, that, that's, you know, what they've always wanted to do. And, um, and when I say keep their options open, we're a school that's open to NQTs and, um, and postgraduates and they often come to placements or site visits. And one of the things um, that they always say, uh, or the majority say, is that, do you know what, I thought I wanted to be a secondary science teacher but I've seen the primary provision here or I've seen working in a special school and, and it's not what I thought it was. Sure. So, so at, you know, moving into NQT and, and doing your postgrad, I'd, I'd be saying to people, you know, have a good, have a good think about what is it because some people that see special needs schools as something um, which they're not. Um, and there's a variety of, of special needs schools. So, so the biggest thing for me would be, um, have a good look around, you know, visit schools, you know, and, um, and, and use that time to really think about, first of all, what is the right type of school. Um, going into your NQT year, um, I always say to our NQTs is that just be yourself, you know, um, we want you to be the best teacher possible, but be yourself and just keep learning. Um, you know, we do a, a major um, CPD uh, long across the year. But for me, I'm looking for an NQT who's, who's, who's looking to thrive on, on learning outside of their teaching and how they can better their practice. You know, how can they now meet individual need in the classroom, especially in a special school context where there's lots of different needs in one class? Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So your movement into middle leadership uh, and, and building your team within, within that environment, how did that pan out for you? Um, well, really, because um, like I said, it's uh, the people I worked with, um, because you work closely with them as a TA, you, know, you knew their strengths, but you also knew where they cut corners, um, you know, you knew which ones <laughs> um, were, were, had, had strengths in certain areas. So, so of course, as then the manager or as a colleague, you know, it's about dealing with, with those aspects of development. Um, and doing it, you know, sensitively, but, but honestly, um, so that they, they all understand that our expectations as middle leaders and, and, and from, from a senior point of view should be theirs um, and, and that that's communicated clearly. So, so I've got to say in general, staff with us were really good. Um, they obviously had the same amount of time working with me and you of my work ethic and the way that I talk to young people and, and staff. Um, and and so, so ultimately the majority were great, the, the, the ones where, you know, we had to have those challenging, difficult discussions just took place because, um, because they needed to, because, you know, the end result was that we wanted a 
consistent, high expectation framework in place for, the, for all, of, all of our staff. Okay. And was the plan always to progress to become a head teacher and, and move into senior leadership? Um, no, <laughs> it's a bit like um, it was never the plan to be a, a TA or a teacher. Um, you know, I, I think I, I, I became ambitious. You know, I enjoyed what I did. Um, the responsibility I was given at different levels was something that I felt like, you know, I, I thrived upon. I, you know, I, I wanted to learn. Uh, I wanted to listen. Um, you know, I took on advice from leaders in terms of the type of leader that, that I should be. And not always agreeing um, because I also feel as a leader that you know you should lead in your own way and we're all different so so yeah I think um, it, it's been it's, 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 it's been a position that, that I really enjoyed um, as I've gone through in terms of headship um, I, I moved from from the school I had most of my education in um, because ultimately I wanted the reins of of, of, of something myself as head of school I had a, a chief exec above me and um, so where, where I was part of the uh, decision making ultimately you know it didn't stop with me and some, sometimes of course you know the chief exec would take a different decision and then that was absolutely fine but I, I really wanted out I felt I was at a, a place and a time where I thought you know let's put your own team together um, and, and give it an opportunity so uh, so I was very fortunate in terms of the first interview I went to from a TA to, to a head teacher interview, I, I was fortunate to get in that position. So, um, so then started off in a very small behaviour school. And how was that? Because I suppose when you've been in one school for a, a long period of time, to then transition to a new school, uh, how did that work out for you? Um, well, well, in the end, um, but, but kind of going into a well-established school um, with long-serving staff and coming with new ideas and, and new views on things, um, that was tricky to start with. Um, you know, they didn't know me professionally or as a person. Hmm. Um, and so it would be fair to say that, you know, in the first six months to a year, that was probably the most um, difficult year of my career in terms of just establishing expectation and getting everybody on the same um, page, um, you, you know, we did have staff that left within that period for the right reasons, I believe. And what that allowed me to do was was bring in and interview people that had the same kind of thoughts and ideas and interests uh, and expectations. Um, you know, some of them were, were people that I'd, I'd worked with previously. Um, and as the team changed and developed, and you know, we got to know each other, um, we got into a place where. Whether the school was functioning very well, it was a, it was a good you know a, a good school. I'm waiting for an inspection. Um, whilst we were waiting for inspection, I was offered uh, an executive headship over this school and another school, which is now my current school. Um, and for the first time, it was going into a special ed school outside of behaviour. It was more around um, moderate learning difficulties and ASD. Um, and and again, another challenge. Um, and so, so within, I think, the first six months, I kind of just looked at it and thought, I, I personally, and I, and I know of, um, some friends and colleagues who were, who were working over two and three schools, but for me, it, it didn't work. I couldn't, you know, shift myself from one school to the next and, yeah. and keep both all the plates in the air. I really wanted to concentrate on one. So I moved to Epony um, School about three and a half years ago. Excellent. And what have been your biggest achievements within you? within your career so far? Um, I've, I've probably got a couple, um, you know, within I think the first 18 months, um, close to two years at Epony, we were inspected. Um, and although that Epony was an outstanding school with around about 150 children, um, our inspection was up to 170 children uh, with increased capacity. The staff team had changed um, quite a lot. And it was the first time also that um, behaviour was down as good and the sixth form had never been inspected um, as, long, you know, as well as the change of framework. So in two years to kind of implement all the changes uh, uh, and to have a successful inspection, we were given outstanding across each area. Um, that for me was, a, was, a, was a, one of the you know, main positives, a team positive. Um, yeah. Last year um, was, was another. We were awarded um, team of the year um, for, for South Tyneside. Brilliant. That was that was you know all council areas, not just education, and uh, 
and I believe the first time schools won it. So, so that that kind of um, that for me was really important. But, but ultimately, um, one of the main positives for me is is, is trying to create a team of um, of similar thinking and similar expectations, where where we're inclusive in in the way we lead the school. Um, and I feel like we've got the team now in place that that you know. Um, we all sing from the same hymn sheet and we've got a very, very tight bond. So, um, so that for me, create, creating that team of positive people and, um, and just brilliant practitioners is, is something I'm, I'm really proud of. Excellent. And what current initiatives have you got going on in school? Um, well, as you know, um, COVID's kind of hit, so that's um, spoiled some things. So that, that's been difficult. Um, but again, we've, we've got a team approach to that and, um, and we're quite happy with where we're at. Um, we're doing you know the best we can as all of the schools are doing um but in terms of going back to school and the biggest initiatives that we've used covid for is putting a brand new curriculum in place um so not only have we revamped the full curriculum um we've also kind of recognized within our own practice that one that you know a, a one curriculum doesn't fit all of our children um and so we've um developed um different curriculum so for instance we've got a new life skills curriculum for a certain group of children next year which will be totally different to, to what you'd call i guess the mainstream uh, national curriculum sure. we've also um developed a, a facility called enrich which is for another group of our children who who, who need additional support in class to deal with some of the, the trauma and, and issues that they've had in their life so 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 that putting all that together has been a massive um team event you can imagine to put all those schemes of work together um but but the other thing to go along with that is is because um fna has, has kind of uh, increased its capacity we are now kind of totally totally full and um one of the things we're looking at is moving site um so that's quite exciting for us because um we've got um a high school which will be empty as of um, september this year and we're just in the initial discussions with the local authority of, um, of us actually moving FNA across to what is a state-of-the-art high school. So, so that's quite exciting. Excellent. Excellent. And outside of work, what do you do to, to sort of, you know, get away from it all and, and you know, chill? Um, I mentioned the sports a person. I'm, I'm getting old, but I still uh, enjoy football, um, watching and playing. I've uh, sort of gone to my third season of over 40s football. Um, <laughs> And I'll, I'm the type of person that will continue doing that until my legs drop off or I've got to start walking football. Um, so, so I love playing. I love watching all kinds of sports um, and then spending time with my family, of course, my children, um, and my fiance, and uh, we like to socialize and go out and, uh, and eat out and drink out. And obviously we can't do that just now, but uh, we're looking forward to doing that. Um, and then just having time just to chill and, you know, recharging the batteries every weekend to, to go back. Excellent. And in terms of uh, within sort of work, what's your what's your favourite work application that you use? Oh, that's a good question. Favourite work application. Um, I, I guess a lot of the stuff that I'm doing just now is uh, strategic. I don't know if this is the right answer or not, but we've got lots of you know the school bus and the key and things like that, which which I found really beneficial. Um, um, so, so I would say the kind of the search engines like that, that, you know, support some of the work we're doing, especially in a changing world with, with COVID and, and writing new policies. It's probably not the most exciting app uh, because it's practical, but, but that's something that, that I, I tend to kind of use quite a lot. And how do you, how do you sort of think COVID is going to impact on the education system? You think we're going to be more flexible with the way in which we deliver i mean obviously a lot of schools have had to um develop an infrastructure pretty much overnight of virtual learning yeah. um which some have found easier than others what do you think is going to happen i, I think it's been one of the positives you know um, when, when we look back in terms of everything that we've managed to do virtually um you know is there any reasons why why we can't do this you know uh, moving forward um you know in terms of uh, all the kind of external um safeguard meetings or looked after meetings that have all happened virtually um rather than everyone kind of coming across the borough you know and outside the borough to one site you know you're saving a lot of time and you're using your time more effectively doing it this way we've used these uh, zooms and, and and whatnot for for keeping in touch with children um by doing assemblies 
we do staff wellbeing Wednesdays where we can all get together after school. Um, so, so from our point of view, we're quite excited actually and wanting kind of reducing the time spent, you know, or meeting and traveling. But, but two, you know, in terms of how creative can we be moving forward of using this technology to kind of, you know, continue doing other things. Brilliant, brilliant. You mentioned wellbeing, staff wellbeing. Um, do you have any other um, specific like in, initiatives in place uh, to, to sort of safeguard staff uh, mental welfare? Yeah, it's, um, so, so we've got a couple of things going on. Um, we've got um, mental health champions in school, which is three or four staff. Um, and what we did at the beginning of COVID in particular, because, you know, this is, um, this is something that none of us have had to kind of deal with. And it'd be fair to say that staff, as well as um, children and parents, you know, can become anxious in terms of returning to work. Um, so we set up a task force at the start of COVID, um, or j- just after the start, which was um, myself and um, the wellbeing champions and, and our safeguarding lead. And, and we set ourselves up just to kind of just, uh, first of all, survey the staff in terms of how are you, what are the things that if we return to school that would support your return, um, <clears throat> what communication lines do we need? And, and rather than me put the email out or communicate it, it was someone from within that group. Um, and that came in confidentially if, if they chose, but it gave us a list of things that was, you know, um, of some of which we thought we'd catered for and some that we hadn't, but it allowed all staff to kind of um, vent off or kind of talk about anything that um, they, they, they envisaged as an issue. So, so that, that, that's worked really well and we, we still meet weekly and we feedback weekly on the actions that we're doing. I mentioned about Wellbeing Wednesday. And again, it's voluntary. We can turn up six o'clock on a Wednesday night and just have a chat about how are things going. Is anything happening with a new school potentially? We have a quiz. Um, it's about the number of kids that we've got in school, and we do a that prize for, for anyone winning winning the quiz. Um, and then we've just tried to support everyone that we can who can't come back to school, who, who feel isolated or not, um, and refer them either to a mental health champions, to a colleague, a friend, or to a, an external agency. Um, but, but ultimately, you know, we think we're doing a good job. We have everybody back on, on site now. Um, you know, we'll have two people shielding for, for the right reasons. Um, and we've got a large staff team, so, it's, so that kind of indicates that, you know, we're, we're, I think we're trying to keep everyone positive. Excellent, excellent. Last couple of questions then. Who's been the biggest influence in your in your actual career, teaching career so far? Um, <clears throat> I don't think I've got one person who, who's a bit who's the biggest influence. I, I'm, I've been very lucky to work with some some outstanding people, and some of whom are with us today, unfortunately. Um, but I've got, you know, I've got teachers who, I guess, when I was at school that I respected and, uh, and, and learned from as a child. Um, I've got teachers and support staff I currently work with um, that, that I feel go the extra mile or, or, or work above and beyond. Um, and, and from a previous employment, you know, the, the leaders that kind of brought me up, um, if you like, through the ranks. Um, there's a lot of... Uh, of the qualities and, and the things that I've picked up that, that I would take. So I, I wouldn't say one person. I think there's, there's lots, there's lots of people that, that I've kind of learned from as I've gone through. Sure. Sure. And if you weren't a teacher, obviously not getting into the police, what do you think you would have been? I could see myself in the top three, probably taking Firmino's uh, position currently in the Liverpool team. If, if that was available, I would have took that. Um, failure to be a, a, a a professional footballer but probably probably a police officer i would have gone back and tried and tried again um i, I really you know have a respect for, for for all um our services but but the police in particular so i think i would have tried that i'm not too sure how much i would have enjoyed the um shifts um because obviously we don't get that in education or maybe the holidays but, but yeah if i did things again and i couldn't be a teacher i would, I would try the police Excellent, excellent. Well, listen, Chris, thank you ever so much for your time. It's been really, really informative. Um, Really appreciate your insight. Um, And I look forward to keeping an eye on your developments with with the school and and the move. Great. Cheers. Thank you very much. Take care. Cheers, Annie.